Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, The Copper Sun that we're reading by Sharon Draper. Uh, we are now on chapter 18. Uh, we're on part 3 with Amari and we're on Roots and Dirt. One afternoon, while Polly and Tibbet had gone to pick berries for, for a pie, Amari and Tini were in a small garden Tini had planted behind the kitchen. If you dig this yellow root here, it'd be called fever grass. Then boil it, Tinny was telling her. You can get rid of stomach cramps, and tea made from the bark of that tree yonder will stop a headache. Ordinarily, Amari enjoyed these sessions with Tini. It reminded her of times her mother had tried to teach her about herbs and roots and teas, but she had been too full of herself to pay much attention. But this day, Amari was unusually quiet, having been compelled to spend the previous night with Clay. He had forced her to do things that made her shiver with shame. And the old folks calls this purple blossom buzzard root. It'd be good for uh, female problems, Tini told Amari quietly. When Amari didn't answer, Tini looked her into her face. You look as low as a toad in a dry well, child. You got the root that kill? Amari asked glumly. To Amari's surprise, Tini replied quietly. Yes, child, I reckon I do. But death is not meant for me to give. She continued to dig fiercely, her head down. Show me, Amari implored, her heart beating faster. Not today, Tinny answered with a firm shake of her head. Ain't nothing you could do right now, child. Tinny paused, then said, For me, it was the overseer, Willie Badgett. Eventually, they get tired of you and moves on. But the terribleness of it just goes to another slave woman. She reached over and touched Amari on the shoulder. She left her hand there a long time. I'm grateful for the touch, Amari told Tinny. I want to die. I want to die. She blinked her eye. She blinked back tears. No child, you was brought here for some reason. Lord knows what it is, though. Tini's voice was so sympathetic, Amari pressed her head into Tini's chest. How long you be this place? Amari asked after a moment, pulling away from her. Oh, I was born here, child. I told you my mama was an African like you be, but they sold her off when I was about your age. Oh no, so very, very bad. Amari knew how deeply that must hurt. Tini's facial expression softened. My mama will be a strong African lady. Ashanti, she told me. She tell me how the thunder of the drums be echoing across the valleys, how the sun look as how the sun look at sunset, like a big old copper pot hanging in the sky. And stories about the antelope and the giraffe, about the monkey and the spider. I tell Tibbet all I can remember. You tell me once that long as you remember, nothing ain't really gone, Amari reminded Tini. Well, I remembers it all. Tini said softly. She reached into a pocket of her apron then and pulled out a small faded scrap of multicolored fabric. Amari put her hand to her mouth with wonder. It was a tiny piece of woven kente cloth. Oh, Amari whispered. It took her back to her father's loom. My mama gave me this, Tini explained. When they snatched her away screaming for my mother, she grabbed onto her mother's head wrap. It ripped and this little piece of it came off in her hand. She clutched it all the way across the big water, even kept it in her mouth when she had to. When she got to this place, she buried it not far from that tree yonder just to keep it safe. Just before they sold her, she gave it to me, and she whispered me that I'll never forget. Tinny sighed. This be my little piece of my mother, my little breath of Africa. It's all I got. She carefully tucked it back into her pocket. The two said nothing for a few moments while they let the memories come in. Tinny cleared her throat then, looked up at the sky and said, uh, uh, probably be rain tomorrow. Suppose so, Omari muttered. Needing to change the subject, she asked, how you get to be cook here? Oh, before she died, the first Miss W put me in charge of the kitchen. That was right after Daisy the cook got sold because she tried to poison Master W. Not too many folks willing to challenge what old Miss W say. I've been cooking ever since. Mari looked up with surprise at the mention of her first wife of Mr. Derby. Other Miss Debbie be dead? Oh, yeah, child. She died giving birth to that suck egg mule clay. Maybe that's why he be so evil. He ain't never had no mama to love him. Mari thought about that for a moment and wondered how his first wife's death had affected the master of the house. But she didn't have all the words she needed to express it. So she asked, Massa Debbie, Miss First Wife? I expect so. She was shapely, black haired, and good looking for a white woman. Plus, she kept his house perfect, and he loved that. He used to act all addle patty when she when he was around her, like she was honey and he was buzzer bee. But she had a shop tongue or be the slave for next to nothing. Uh, what Master Debbie do when she die? Amari asked. Oh, Master liked to die himself. Couldn't eat nor sleep. He wouldn't even look at that baby. Pay no attention to all at that child to that child till he be about mm, six year old. Clay grew up alone in that big house with a bunch of nannies from across the water. Why Master marry up with Miss Isabel? 
Amari ventured. Why do white folks do anything? Tini answered with a laugh, holding her arms up to the sky. All as I know is she had to come here to a cold old fish like Master Dubby, put up with his awful son and paintings of the dead wife, and be cut off from all the friends and family. Tini went back to digging her roots and plucking tomatoes in, not willing to discuss it any further. Amari returned to the kitchen. She picked up a broom made of branches and began to sweep the dusty floor. The harder she swept, the thicker the dust became. Dirt, dirt swirled everywhere. She saw nothing but dirt in her own future. All right, so finishing up on chapter 18. Um, again, we just kind of see the aftermath of how Amari feels when she has to stay the night with Clay, um, when he's basically forcing her to be with him um, every single night. We have here where she's talking about the some of the roots and some of the um, poisonous roots. So Teeny does know about poisonous roots that can kill people. And Amari, we don't, we're not quite sure if she wants to know about the roots to kill herself, the poisonous seeds to kill herself, or to kill Clay. We don't know. Regardless, um, she, Teeny says there's nothing she could do right now. Like right now, she is not in a place mentally or otherwise to do anything with any of that, uh, with any of those poisonous roots. Um, so we get a little bit more background with Teeny. Teeny has gone through the same thing. She was raped by the overseer. Willie Badgett, he eventually got tired of her and went on to another slave woman. Um, but as you can tell, that just, you know, that's a that's a violation of the highest order and she'll never get rid of it. We also hear a little bit more about Tini's mother. Her mother was a Shanti, which means that um, she was very close to the UA tribe. So remember the Shanti tribe and the UA tribe um, were very close, almost like brother, sister tribe. So the language is very um, you know, Amari knows the language really well. They're really close with each other. They all grow kente cloth. That is a thing that they do in uh, Ghana, in the country they're at. Even to this day, they still create and make kente cloth. It's a, a big industry there. Um, and so she is shocked. Amari is kind of shocked that Tini um, is descended from the Ashanti, so which was a strong African clan. So uh, we just learned a little bit about her, more about what Tini's had to go through as a as a slave here on the plantation bit by bit um, and again like i said before um african women african-american women in um on the plantations had it very very difficult so her mother was ripped from her just as um teeny's mother was ripped from her mother um it's just a vicious cycle we also get introduced or not introduced but we get mention of mrs derby isabel derby who was the new wife to uh to perceival derby Mr. Derby. We don't know a lot about her yet, but uh, she's definitely a character in the story who we will be seeing soon. Um, and you kind of get to tell that Derby, maybe he was a nicer guy when the first Mrs. Derby was alive, his first wife. We could tell that she was very, very mean. So she was evil like him. So maybe they were both just evil, mean people, beating slaves, keeping things in order. Um, so we do not know how the new Mrs. Derby is. So Isabel is could be just as evil <laughs> as the old one. Uh, she's younger, so. But Clay doesn't like her, so that kind of gives you a little insight of, like, you know, is she different, maybe a little bit different. Maybe she treats Clay really bad. We just don't know yet. So um, that's pretty much it for Chapter 18, really quick chapter. Uh, and uh, we'll see you back here for Chapter 19. Thanks for listening. See you on the next one.